Okay, guys, so welcome to your vocabulary two. The topics that I'm going to cover today would involve the common incorrect usage of your words that many of the Filipino test takers are using nonchalantly. I also would like to share to you the information with regard to phrasal verbs. Included in our topic discussion would be your idioms and idiomatic expressions so that we can put to rest the question as to whether as candidates, we can or we cannot use idiomatic expressions in the exam, both for writing and speaking. And lastly, the concept of your collocations, all right? So those are the four topics that we will cover for the remaining hours of our discussion today. So I would like to personally welcome everyone and if you guys have any questions during my discussion, please feel free to unmute yourself and ask me anything during, but as I've mentioned previously, I would be appreciating it if you would take hold of those questions and wait until the end so that we can sort of go into a forum session that we can discuss everything that you would like to, to know. So, now, vocabulary two. As you guys already know, we have four vocabulary lectures, okay? You have your vocabulary one, which is um, understanding the context. So if you want to understand your reading examination much better, then that is the lecture that I suggest that you attend, okay? So let's say I attended the major lecture in reading already, I am practicing, but there seems to be no progress in my reading examination results. So what should I do? So my suggestion is you attend vocabulary one because the goal of that lecture is to increase your understanding about context. And when it comes to context, that's understanding the meaning so that you can compare and contrast ideas for and against. Now, what vocabulary two is, is primarily the coverage of your writing and the speaking subtest. So if you need to perform much better in your speaking and writing, then this topic is what I would like you to attend. Again, this is not about writing and speaking. This, just, this is just a part of the assessment for your writing and speaking because as we already know, vocabulary and lexical resource are being assessed in both those examinations. And it is imperative for candidates like us to get a hold of this information as we can so that we can utilize them appropriately. Okay, so that is the concept of our lecture, what the topic is going to be about. So first of all, let's do the common incorrect usage, all right? So there's a variety of English used in the Philippines by the media and the vast majority of educated Filipinos. And uh, due to this, due to this variety, there are also sub varieties of the Philippine English that have emerged. So when it comes to the major groups of English being spoken, we already know that when it comes to the pronunciation, we can refer to them as accent. So there's three major category of English being spoken worldwide. And that is your American, British, and Australian accents respectively. But when it comes to the language used, because Philippines is a country very far from the original source of the language, we tend to mix and match sub varieties depending on the context. And based on the regional location of the speakers, code mixing is inevitable. And that is what Filipino English has become. Sometimes we use what we refer to as Taglish. We have the Konyo English, we have the um, comparisons between the technical terms depending on which course 
you took when you were in college. So you, there's a probability that a different version of English would come out depending on the different situations you're in. And that is what we're trying to avoid because we do not want to bring a common conclusion among the speakers, among the users of the language for this matter. So for this instance alone, I am going to give you an example, all right? A clear example of this is the word or the phrase, what do you call this? All right. Many people refer to what do you call this phrase when they are speaking. And they do so because they forgot something. For example, I have here a plastic container that contains water. Many of us would refer to this as tumbler. But sometimes during special situations, during important situations, our brain tend to forget important ideas. Our brain might forget the actual words that we use to refer to this, which is Tumblr. So for example, I am going to explain to you what Tumblr is. And because I forgot the exact same word for this, the exact word for Tumblr, what I'm going to do is that my brain shifts into what I'm comfortable with. And that is, anong tawag dun? And then you will be converting that into English. Anong tawag dun becomes what do you call this? Now, that is what we call an un-American expression, a non-English expression. So when you say non-English expression, we are, you know, we Filipinos have our own expressions, all right? We have our own expressions when we are scared. We have our own expressions when we are um, surprised, okay? Or when we become angry. So we have our different expressions for that. And our expression when we forget something is, anong tawag dun? Nasa dulo na ng dila ko? And then it will be translated into, what do you call this? It's on the tip of my tongue. And that is not the proper way to use the English language. Okay, that's just one example. I still have tons of examples. That is why the first thing that I have included in my lecture is common incorrect usage. We're going to understand what are the common words, phrases, and expressions that you yourself may be guilty of using so that we can correct those uh, wrong things early on. All right, so, okay, the first item Okay, the first term that I would like you to understand is this. Sandy took my ball pen without my permission. Again, Sandy took my ball pen. Mm -hmm. Sandy took my ball pen without my permission. Tinuha ng walang paalam. Took without permission. Now, the problem here is there, there's a word for that. There's a word for taking something without permission. And that means stealing. So instead of saying, Sandy took my ball pen without my permission, you could have said, Sandy stole my ball pen. All right? Gretchen, the ST queen, had a lot of bold movies. Well, you, you see, in the Philippines, we refer to as pornographic contents as bold. But we can't blame people because bold means courageous. Bold means something unusual. So we refer to as something unusual, which in this occasion, pornographic contents, as bold. But bold is actually a word that has a beautiful meaning. It means courageous. It means brave. So we don't refer to them as bold movies. We refer to them as, that's it pornographic movies or nude naked film okay or adult film that is the most formal term for pornographic films adult films although whatever films that are watched by adults are referred to as adult films that is an expression that 
it exists in English language, that literally means pornographic films. For a while, well, you see, in other countries, they do not like the words for a while because for them, for a while will take quite some time, probably a day or months. So we do not want to use for a while very often, especially if we're already in the US, in the UK, or in Hungary for Jonalyn's case. Um, you could probably use in a bit or just a sec or in a minute. Like in a minute, I will transfer the call to Mrs. Dimatulak's local number or instead, in a bit, hang on, I will transfer your call to Mrs. Dimatulak's local number because when you say for a while, for them, it would take some time. It would take a couple of days, months, or even weeks or years for something to be accomplished and they don't have that much time. So people might get pissed because of that. So you don't use improper terms in English language because the meaning that you're trying to promulgate, the meaning, the context that you're trying to let the other party understand is just not being given the way you want it to. So that's why we're here. Okay, now another list of common mistakes that I would like to share to everyone is this, a part tell. Like we normally hear it, we watch some, some news and there are some commercials or radio programs that we listen to and you will hear a part tell. And you know, probably every single one of you right here understands what an apartheid is because we're in the Philippines. We know that an apartheid is a combination of an apartment and a hotel. Take a look at this. Take a look at the anatomy of this word. Apartment and then hotel. And then what's the extra L-E? You know, for it to sound more posh, for it to look more high-end. That's why people put an L-E. So an apartheid is a word that could probably be accepted in Urban Dictionary online, but apartheid is a word that doesn't exist in the formal English language use. So if you want to refer to an apartment that work as a hotel, then you have to be specific, apartment hotel like that. You don't refer to it as apartheid because this is just a term that Filipinos invented. Okay, this is just our own code mixing, okay? Now, baby bus. Have you ever seen a bus, you know, getting pregnant, you know, and then a bus, a big bus giving birth to a bus? I mean, it's not gonna work. So you want to say a bus that is smaller than the usual? So you say mini bus or small bus, okay? We can actually use different terms. In your grammar five, I've discussed that you can put other words in front of a bus and it will be now referred to as a city bus or provincial bus because that is just how your modifiers work, okay? Bar girl, this is the third, okay? This is, uh, by the way, in alphabetical order. So you have bar girl, okay? Bar girl, that's just basically a girl that you see in a bar. But when you refer to as a female uh, worker, okay, an escort perhaps, who dances and strips, you know, the clothing, we refer to them as strippers. We do not refer to them as bar girl because bar girl is typically just any female person who goes into a bar, not to, to dance or to strip, but those workers, those sexual workers, we refer to them as strippers, okay? So make sure to know their correct terminologies, okay? Now, here's another word, big time. This is mostly used to describe a person who is rich or has a lot of money. For example, um, you went abroad, okay? And then you came back in the Philippines. Let's say you went to Japan, you went to UK, to US, and then you saved some money, enough for your family, enough for you to buy a small house, 
um, a decent car and for a future for the school of your children. So, and then your college classmates, mga kumpare, kumare, sabihin, pre, big time ka na. All right? So that, that's, that's what Filipinos refer to if we are pertaining to a person who has a lot of money. But once again, this is just an urban way of code mixing. So if you want to refer to as a person who is rich or who has a lot of money, we refer to them as elite or high profile, okay? So you either use elite or high profile or you can just say rich, right? Or successful, okay? Now, biscuit as the English term for biscocho, so we don't refer to them as biscuit. We refer to them as cookies. Okay, so we use the proper terminologies because you might not get understood by the people you're talking to if we're going to use improper terms and um, non-English expressions. Now, let us continue with letter B. Okay, another take here is blow out. Blow out, okay, means to throw a party. Like when your friend, hey, your birthday is coming up next week. When are you going to blow us out? Or when are you going to do a blow out? Okay, that's, that's wrong. Why? Because blow out in American English and in the worldwide expression, it means that your car has a flat tire, okay? So we don't refer to as blow out as a mean to throw a party. Rather, use the term host a party. Let's say, hey, your birthday is next week. Aren't you going to host a party? So that means, aren't you going to treat us? Or that's, you just have to say, aren't you going to treat us? That's much better, okay? Than saying blow out. Because blowout means the tires exploded from a car and you're wishing someone to have a blowout, that's not good. So you have to remember to use the proper expressions. Again, bold, let me re replay, repeat the ideas about bold. Bold, the literal translation is brave, daring, and courageous. So if you're trying to refer to something as uh, adult films or things that has or things that are related to adult films like pornographic industry of some sort, use the words nude or naked. Okay, those are much better choices instead of using bold. So right now, you change your habits. You use the proper ones. Okay, boundary. What is boundary? Boundary, I, I bet you guys heard this word. Um, you, you might probably heard this from a jeepney driver or a tricycle driver saying, oh, I can go home now because I've already reached my boundary. Well, in that sense, in the Filipino sense, boundary refers to an amount. Public transport drivers pay their operators daily. Any excess belongs to the driver as his daily wage. So for example, I am the tricycle operator. I own a tricycle that has a sidecar and uh, I don't know how to drive, but I know someone who knows how to drive. So I'm going to let that person ride my tricycle. Um, so the boundary or the amount that they need to get for me on a daily basis is 150. And then any excess from that 150, let's say they, they got 400. So 250 goes to them, 150 passes goes to me. That is the, the Filipino expression. But boundary isn't near. Okay, boundary is nowhere near the actual expression, the actual terminology for that. Because boundary means limit. Boundary means extent or ceiling. Hangganan. Hanggang dito lang. All right, so when you say boundary, so I'm drawing a square right here. Okay, you cannot go beyond it. So that means it, it's out of bounds or out of boundary. So it means that you're pushing beyond. That is the actual definition. So we do not say boundary as uh, jeepney or tricycle driver's wages. 
boundary actually has um, has its own meaning, which is a limit, an extent, or a ceiling. So you have to refer to them with the proper terms starting from now, okay? All right, so that's uh, letter B for you. We still have letter B, the last one, bottomless. Okay, what is bottomless? Well, you know, when you go to different restaurants, okay? And uh, the restaurant offers unlimited, unlimited food and drinks. This is what they normally refer to for their iced tea, bottomless iced tea. You know, when you say bottomless, there's actually um, a mnemonic for it. There's actually a um, story behind it. Because, you know, let's say this is your picture. Okay, it has a bottom, right? Okay, but when you say bottomless, there's no bottom. Like it doesn't end. So that is the reason why people refer to it as, as bottomless instead of unlimited because they have the same idea. They give off unlimited water, unlimited iced tea or Coke. Tasty, sweet. All right, but Again, that is wrong because Filipinos, we just invented that. So what's the proper term for an unlimited drink in a restaurant? Refillable. So let's say you're in New Zealand or you're in the US and you're eating at the restaurant and you said, oh, is this correct? You have unlimited drinks. So my cup here is refillable, not bottomless okay remember that now cabaret or nightclub you know what guys this blows my mind because nightclubs you know clubs always operate at night until dawn okay let's say they will operate at i don't know if i'm correct they will operate at six in the afternoon and then until the following 6 a.m that's how they do the nightclub Okay, where, where people sing karaoke and their friends hang out and they eat different types of unhealthy food. Okay, that's nightclub. But if you are referring to a club where there are dancers, you know, throwing their clothes for money, we don't refer to it as nightclub. The actual term for that is strip club. Okay, so that's the proper term. Again, calling card, you cannot use that card to call someone. So you say, hey, here's my business card, not calling card. Again, business card. Biz, with the highlight on the first letter S sound, it becomes a Z because whenever an S is between two vowel sound, it becomes a Z. Business, treasure, pleasure. Okay, so you use the following terms correctly and even the proper pronunciation. Now, canteen. Canteen. What is canteen anyway? Well, canteen, as many of you would know, canteen is an eatery inside the school premises, right? Well, that's not the proper term for it. Okay, if an eatery is inside the school, we refer to that as cafeteria. But what about the word canteen? What does it mean? What is the actual definition of the word canteen? It's a portable chest with compartments for carrying bottles for cooking and eating. So whenever you see a horse, okay, let's say this is a horse and a horse has a saddle. This is where the person sits, okay? There's a drape that goes over the horse like this, okay? And then there are some pockets that people use to put the bottles, the frying pan, and things alike for traveling. That is canteen. So again, sir, what if I'm going to eat at, um, at a place that is not inside the school premises? We call, we call it eatery. All right. If it's more high end, if it's more expensive, 
we refer to that as restaurant. But what about diner? Diner only offers breakfast and dinner meals. They do not offer typical meals and viands, all right? So that's what diner is. So diner, eatery, cafeteria, restaurant, they are different from one another, okay? Why is car park wrong? Okay, let me ask a question from my students. Let's start from the bottom. Okay, Emil, probably you have an idea why the term car park is wrong. Why is it improper? Okay, Emil, are you there? Yes, sir. Okay, Emil, why do you think car park is in this side that refers to as common mistakes? Why do you think car park is not a proper term? Para kasi siyang, ano, wait, sa car park, yeah, alam mo yung parang yung uh, yung mga okay, cars doon you mismo sa park. <laughs> yung, okay. <laughs> Alright, so car, this is what makes this wrong. Car. Why? Because you see, if it's a car park, then only cars can park there. What about motorcycles? What about small trucks? What about vans? What about SUVs? Right? So it's not just car park because car park, it's only for cars. So it should be parking lot so that it encompasses everything. Okay, no car park, parking lot. What about cargo train? All right, guys, remember, if we see the word Cargo, okay, let me draw something. If you see the word cargo, okay, cargo is only for planes and ships. But you see the crazy part here? is that if it is shipment, it cannot ride a plane or a ship. It can only be traveled by land. It can only travel by land. So planes and ships for cargo, shipment for land. So instead of shipment, we refer to them as freight. So freight, train, So if it is um, if it is traveling by land, it can either be referred to as a shipment or freight. Let's say it's a truck, it's freight. It's a, it's on a bus, it's a shipment. Okay, but if it is cargo, it can only travel by air and by sea. So that's very opposite, right? So that's it. Now what about car napper? Now, you see, in the Philippines, we always refer to thieves as nappers. Okay, so we have dog nappers. We have cat nappers. Oh, well, let's not forget kidnappers. And um, all the nappers out there. But they're wrong, okay? We do not say car napper. Do not say whole dapper. You don't say dog napper, car napper, kidnapper. You know, in the Philippines, we always hear them. But it's not correct. The proper term, the proper term for this is a car thief. What about dog napper? A dog thief. If we're referring to the person, a cat thief. Or, but kidnapper is actually uh, a term. So kidnapper, you can use it whenever you want it, okay? So that is the differences of the letter C. Things that you would like to add, guys. Do you have any before I proceed to the next slide? 
Okay, none. So let me move on to the next slide now. Again, car napping, that is the act. So if it is the act, we refer to it as theft. So motor vehicle theft. Okay. Shit, we do not refer to as shit because it only exists in very few um, establishments, like the school in which I go to, uh, in which I went to when I was still in high school. Divina Pastora College, they have this chip system in which your 10 peso bill will be converted first into a card. And that, that is the monetary um, monetary labels that you can use. That is your pass. That's some sort of payment that they honor. Okay, You, you cannot pay with actual money. They actually have their own economy there. Okay, so chip only exists in the Philippines. It doesn't exist elsewhere. So please refer to at those words properly as restaurant bill or a card. Okay, close the light. This is very easy. Turn off. Turn off the light, turn off the TV, turn off the computer. Combo, okay? Combo, especially during um, funerals, especially during the last night of the funeral. Sabi ng mga kapitbahay, Huling gabi na daw ah. Andiyan na ba yung combo? Alright, so that's wrong. Combo means combination. But you know, Filipino terms refer to it as musicians. So we do not use the word combo here. We refer to it as musical band. Okay? Okay, guys, I muted myself because I was about to sneeze. Okay, I grabbed my um, tissue. So let's talk about combo. So again, we do not refer to them as combo anymore. The proper term is musical band. Okay, so if the musical band consists of um, instruments, wind instruments, we refer to them as brass band. But if the band, you know, they're walking with all their instruments. We call them marching band. If those marching band members are resting inside a hall, a concert hall, we refer to them as an orchestra. Okay, so that's the proper term, musical band. So comfort room, we don't refer to as comfort room. You say toilet. Okay, toilet. What else? Washroom. Wash area, lavatory. Okay, cotton bud. This is this cotton bud right here. So cotton bud, this is the brand. So the proper term here is cotton swab. Okay, cotton swab. That's why it's a swab test, like the one that you put inside your nose. It's a cotton swab, not cotton bud. All right, coupon bond. Ano ang tawag ng mga nanay natin? Kokumban. Yan. Kokumban. So it's the it's not the proper term. It should be bond paper. Cutex. That is the brand. So avoid using brands every single time. So the generic term for cutex would be nail polish. Okay. Next up. So we have letter C, we have double deck, double bed, because double deck in the UK refers to the bus. Drive-in motels in the Philippines, but drive-in is actually an outdoor movie theater. So it's actually a word that exists, okay? So please use the proper term. Drinker medicine should be take your medicine. Duster, what's a duster? It's a feather duster. So what about the, the clothes that I wear? that has a lot of polka dots or sunflowers in it. So it's not a duster, we call it a sundress. Okay, sun 
dress or Sunday dress. You can actually use that. All right. Entertain. How can I entertain you, especially if you're answering calls? It should be, how can I assist you? How can I assist you this time? Unfortunately, I cannot assist you at this time. So use assist instead of entertain. Eat all you can. One friend of mine said, it's eat all you can. Another friend of mine said, it's all you can eat. Both of them are incorrect because the proper term is very simple. It's just buffet. So refer to that as buffet, not eat all you can, not all you can eat. Fill up. Fill up is wrong. Use the proper term. What's the proper term? Fill out. Fill up. Okay, fill up. What is the Filipino term for this? Punuin. Okay, when you say fill up, punuin. You say fill up my cup. So let's say here is my cup. It's uh, half empty. And when you say fill up, you're going to put some contents until it becomes full. That is fill up. You don't say accomplish the form. You need to accomplish this now. Uh, secure. Secure the form. It means that you've already filled them out and you're just making sure that they're not um, torn or something. So it should be fill out. Again, fill out, not fill up. As I've mentioned, for a while, it will take quite a long time. So you can use, please wait, hold on in a minute, just a sec. In a bit, all right? What about go ahead? Go ahead literally means mauna na ako in Filipino. So if you want to say mauna na ako, you don't say go ahead. You say, I'll go before you now. Okay. Hand carry, especially for those travelers. Sabihin, ilan ba hand carry mo? All right, it should be carry on luggage. How much weight is allowed for my carry on luggage that is the proper expression all right so let me just clear all my drawings so that we can move on to the next how does she look it should be what does she look like what about i want to request for approval you're not requesting for approval or you don't want to request you're already requesting for approval so remove the I want to request for approval because you're already talking to your boss. I am here because I want to request for approval. No, I'm here because I am requesting for approval of my application for leave. Okay, you don't say jingle. You also don't say piss. Piss is informal. So you refer to it as urinate. Excuse me, may I use your toilet for a moment? Because I need to urinate or I need to empty my bladder. Those are expression that those are the expressions that are not very um, informal and they don't sound disrespectful all right live in an unmarried couple who lives together in a relationship so it's not live in it should be common law partner so hey ito nga pala live in partner ko you don't say it like that here's my common she's my whole common uh, law partner okay master else you're not taking your master's or your doctoral's. You're taking your master's degree. You're taking your PhD. You don't say master's or doctoral's. All right. So please use the proper terms. Metro aid. What if that person is not in Metro Manila? Diba? So you don't say Metro aid, street sweeper. What about mineral water? What if the water doesn't contain minerals? The actual term should be bottled water. Motor, okay, it should be motorcycle, the proper term. Napkin, so we have different types of napkins. You have the sanitary napkin and you have the tissue paper. So use the proper corrections, okay? No parking on both sides. Come on, how can you literally park on both sides? Did you bring two cars? Of course not. So no parking on either side. Open the light. Again, close, open. You don't do it like that. Turn off. If you want to uh, shut it off, and if you want to put the power on, back on, you say turn on. 
overpass. Overpass, we have uh, different types of it. So pedestrian overpass, where people can cross, and overpass, which means a bridge or road crossing over another road. So with this is the uh, this is a construction work where vehicles can also cross. Okay, please pass by. Pass by is literally passing by. It should be drop by. Drop by, which means they're going to do a like chit chat over anything. So next is pack up. Pack up. The proper term is wrap up because wrap up it refers to movie sets. Let's say tapos na sila mag shooting, they say, "All right, it's a wrap or wrap up." It means magbabalik na tayo uwi na. So in the Filipino meetings, ginagamit na rin yan. So wrap up. Pero napalitan si wrap up ng pack up. So don't use pack up because wrap up is the original. All right, pencil pen. That's a marker. Pencil is a brand. So a marker. Use the word marker, not pencil pen. All right? Ball pen, refer to it as just a pen. Can I borrow your pen? All right? Photoshop, Photoshop, this is the brand. As I've mentioned, please do not be too comfortable using brands for everything. So digitally edited image or another digitally enhanced image. All right. Sir, what about if I'm going to use that in my writing task too? Sabihin ko po, the image is Photoshop. So instead of doing that, the image is digitally enhanced. So you can use. All right, pictorial, that's improper. It should be photo shoot. Polo, all right. If, um, if your shirt has a color here, okay? If your shirt has a color here, ang tinatawag natin doon polo shirt, but that's improper. The proper term is just a shirt. Diba? Sir, paano kung puro botones? Yung let's puro botones po yung polo hanggang dito. So we call it button down shirt. Ito. Button. Pag sa jacket naman, down filled jacket. Na puro botones. Or if you want to be less technical, wedding shirt, wedding jacket na lang. All right? You don't have to make things complicated anyway. So we don't say polo. Sama nagsimula yung polo na yan because most of the polo shirts and most of the dress shirts that Filipino use are from Ralph Lauren Polo Sport. So kaya naging na siyang polo. Natawag na yung brand. PowerPoint slideshow. That's the proper term. To use it accurately. Next, presidential or a person aspiring to become a president, it should be presidential candidate or presidential bid. Railway, it should be railroad. Revival version of a song. Well, did the song die? No. So it should be cover version of a song. Retouch, touch up. Rubber shoes, so you have to be specific. You have sneakers, you have athletic shoes, you have gym shoes, you have cross trainers. So what type of shoes? Not just rubber shoes. Salvage. Pre, meron daw si Nalvage doon no? sa kangkungan tinapon, chap-chap. No? Salvage actually is a good word. Okay, so let me draw something here. Salvage is actually a good word because salvage means to rescue or to save. Na isalba. All right? But when you say uh, salvage, you're referring to an execution or killing someone chopped parts of the body. The right term here is assassinated. Here. Assassinated. Someone was assassinated in the Kangkungan. That's it. All right. So instead of saying salvage, okay? Now, senatorial ball, again. Senatorial candidate or a person aspiring to become a senator, scotch tape. What if it's not made in Scotland? So the proper term is adhesive tape. All right. So what about sign pen? It's a technical pen or just a pen for signing documents. Stop light. What about the go signal? Traffic light. 
All right? Andito na ako sa may crossing, sa may stoplight. Traffic light. All right? Take your seat. Sit down. Please sit down. Traffic. It is traffic in my hometown. That's wrong. It should be the traffic is heavy in my hometown. The traffic is light. The traffic is moderate. The traffic is heavy. Tuck in. Ano kabaliktaran? Tuck out. Mali. Kabaliktaran ng tuck in, untuck. Tupperware, that is the brand. What about the generic name? Plastic container. So this Tupperware or plastic container, uh, World War III can happen if we don't return those uh, stuff to your mom. Kasabihin pa niya sa'yo, at di mo binalik yung Tupperware ko? Napanalunan ko pa yan nung Christmas party namin nung 1993. All right? So, always return Tupperwares. Again, plastic containers to your moms. All right? Tupperware is the brand. Plastic container is the proper term. Vendo machine, vending. Vendo is the brand. Vulcanizing shop, it's a truck tire repair shop or automobile tire repair shop or just simply tire repair shop. We accept. Minsan makakakita ka sa mga gilid ng kalsada. We accept business signage, cards, flyers, posters. That's wrong. Instead of we accept, use the proper term, we do. Okay? Where do you study? It should be where do you go to school or what school do you go to? With regards... GT, especially, listen carefully. You're going to write a letter. So you will be using these uh, phrase. But the problem with, with regards is this. This is improper. Why? Well, you see, if with is the word that you're going to use, then regard must not contain an S. Sir, what if I want it to contain an S? Then use as. So it's so simple to understand. With regard, both of them don't contain an S. As regards, both of them contain an S in the end. So, with regard, as regards. Sir, nalilito ako. Regarding. Sir, nalilito ako. About. So, either use about or regarding if you cannot follow with regard or as regards. Xerox, photocopier or photocopy machine. Again, because... Xerox, or some people might say Xerox, this is the term. This is the brand name. So the proper phrase, the proper terminology is photocopier or photocopy machine. Okay, we're done with your common uh, issues, common incorrect expressions. Does any one of you have any questions? Jonalyn, Zhao, Jeffrey, uh, Emil, Daniel, Joshua. Any of you, do you guys have any questions or concerns? Okay, I'll take that as a no. So phrasal verbs, this is literally just a combination of verbs and another part of speech. Mostly, it's a preposition, okay? So verb plus preposition or adverb, which creates a meaning different from the original verb. So let's say the word bring. Okay, bring is a very simple word to understand. Bring in Filipino language, we call it dinala or dala. Okay. But look at the expressions that we're going to identify. Because bring is turned into a past participle and it is added together with the preposition up, it now becomes brought up. And the meaning now becomes race. So you see, the meaning of race is very different from dinala or dala. They're completely different. Why? Because of the word up. Just because of that. Just because of the word up, the meaning has been completely different. This seminar brought out. Now, brought means dinala. But because of the presence of out, the verb now, together with the expression, the prepositional phrase, the preposition out, it now becomes illicit. Okay, what about the last? Bring about. Bring or brought, in this case, it's become a past participle. And then about, that is your preposition. The 
meaning turns to cause. So you see, from the word dinala, dala, from the root word bring, the phrase becomes really different because um, you added some prepositions, all right? You added up, you added out, you added about. Now it turned out to be different. And that's what this topic is about. We're going to understand why phrasal verbs are important. How can I learn more about this? What's the importance of phrasal verbs in my study for IELTS? And what are the ways in which I can minimize the occurrence of committing errors for this part of speech? So let's continue. All right. So we have different types of separable verbs. Uh, sorry, we have different types of phrasal verbs. The first one being your separable. Again, as the name implies, separable means they can be separated together. Ito yung phrasal verbs that believe in a phrase that nothing lasts forever. Walang forever. Okay? Because naghihiwalay din sila. So the object can separate the verb from the preposition. So example, this is your phrasal verb. But since they are separable, you can actually turn this into this. So I turned off the light versus I turned the light off. So they mean the same, literally. And they still have the same context. The only difference is turn and off were separated from each other, but they're still phrasal verb, okay? What about this? You have to do this paint job over. So if I'm going to write it using the phrasal verb, if I'm going to combine them, you have to do over this paint job. That's it. So it's either... You put them together or you put them apart because they can be separated. That's just the idea. So that is, that is the first phrasal verb that we're going to study. Okay. What about intransitive verb? Again, when you want to create sentences, okay? Basic sentence structures. We follow two formulas. Number one is the subject combined with transitive verb plus the direct object, the STVDO. So subject plus transitive verb plus direct object. Call it the STVDO formula. STVDO. All right. Now for the second sentence structure, you have the subject, you have the intransitive verb. Again, intransitive, this is the exact same thing we're trying to know, intransitive verb. So this intransitive verb can or may not feature an object. We refer to this as indirect object. So for those of you who lost their touch studying, ano nga ba itong subject transitive na to? All right, let me give you an example. So for this example, so the first one, I'll be giving you an example. So number one, I, which is my subject, the pizza. So I is your subject right here. It is the verb that you use. Direct object receives the action. So meaning that I, that is my subject, the doer of the action. Siya yung kumain. Not she, not her, not the dog. It is the action verb. This is the verb na ginamit niya to enact the action to whom or to what. So it's either a person or a thing. Pizza. Ano yung kinain? Pizza. So we understand because of this arrangement, na I, yung tao, ate, kumain ng pizza. Hindi pwedeng yung pizza, kinain yung tao. 
That's different, okay? So, we refer to this as subject, transitive verb, and direct object. But when it comes to subject, intransitive verb, indirect object, I, okay, so two, I live in the Pan City. Another, okay, so ito yung sample A natin. And then you have the sample B. I went to the park yesterday. Pero yung pang dagdagan, with my dog. Okay, for example. So I ate the pizza. That is your subject transitive verb, direct object. And then I live in Gapan City. That is your intransitive verb. And then I went to the park yesterday. So sir, uh, why do you think na ito pong sample mo, all right, na I live in Gapan City at saka I went to the park yesterday. Why the two of them are not the same, all right? With I ate the pizza. Eh, I, that is your subject, I, I. Ate, live, and went. Pare-parehas namang may verb. Tapos made the pizza in Gapan City to the park yesterday. Okay. Now, the problem here is this. I would like to highlight this, all right? Because of the words in and to. Look, the words in and to directly follows your live and went. That makes them intransitive. Again, Gapan City, remember, an indirect object cannot be a person or a thing. So your indirect object can only be a place or a time. And a place and a time requires preposition. Your preposition of place, your preposition of time. In, at, on, which is exactly what we're going to learn by your grammar six. So that's it. Intransitive phrasal verb. You cannot follow it by a direct object. It's only an indirect object or perhaps none at all. Like, I went there, right? Where's there? You don't, you don't say where, okay? So he suddenly showed up. See? From the word showed up, there's nothing after here. Showed up. And then there's nothing. There's nothing here. There's no phrase or word that follows it. So he is your subject, showed up, is your verb and your preposition. That's it. The children promise to come over, but they never do. So this, the children promise to come over. Okay. You can actually put a period there already. The children promise to come over. And that's it. There's no after uh, effect. There's no word that comes after come over. Okay. When we visited Paris, we loved eating out in the sidewalk cafes. So eating out where in the side sidewalk cafes? And again, sidewalk cafe, because that is a place, it is an indirect object. Okay. Remember that. So in transitive verb, when it comes to our uh, formula, how to construct a sentence, those are just some of the sentence structure. Again, we're going to focus mainly on sentence structure by your grammar seven. So we're literally just in grammar five. We still have grammar six and seven. Grammar for IELTS, which have occurred last week. So that's the basic idea about it. So that is your intransitive phrasal verb. What about inseparable? So this phrasal verb is not the same as your separable because, you know, this is the opposite. Separable verb can be separated, but because of the presence of the root word separable, and then the prefix in, which means not inaccurate, not accurate, innocuous, not oculus. So inseparable means not separable. You cannot put them apart. You cannot 
separate them from one another. Okay, the situation called for, take a look at this, a series of urgent solutions. Can I go something like the situation called a series of urgent solutions for? You don't do that. Unlike what we did on the previous um, separable verb, you have to do over this paint job. You have to do this paint job over. You can separate your verb and the preposition, but in the inseparable verb, you cannot do so. All right. Same as this. Carlos ran into. I got over the flu, but I don't know if I'll ever get over my broken heart. All right. So that's it. That's your inseparable verb. I hope you guys understand because we're going to learn more about uh, what are those phrasal verbs and what are they used for. But before we end the phrasal verb comparisons, if those three, separable, intransitive, and inseparable phrasal verbs are still not difficult for you, I still have something. You have the three word phrasal verbs. And three word phrasal verbs, as the name implies, they contain a minimum of three words, but they can go as much as four, okay? Take a look at this. We're going to identify where the verb is. So you have check, you have come, get, and then get, and then look. And then we're going to use the heart-shaped sticker. Up is your preposition, on is your preposition. That makes it a three-word phrasal verb, one main verb, two preposition. Come up with, come is your verb, up and with are your prepositions. Get along with, along and with are your prepositions. So you get the point. A three-word phrasal verb at the bare minimum will be a structure of a verb plus two prepositions. So that is how we make a three word phrasal verbs. Again, the verbs meaning will be completely different even with just one preposition. So check, tingnan, check up, um, look, check up on, tingnan ng mabuti. Come, pumunta, come up, all right? Umangat, come up with, magkaroon ng excuse or magkaroon to have. Uh, after years of giving nothing, the old prisoner was able to come up with. Bigla siyang all of a sudden nagkaroon. Get kinuha. Along kasama. With. Together. So get along with. Magkasundo. Alright? So you get the idea. Alright? That is how phrasal verbs work. Next. Uh, just for the basic thing, I want to share this to you guys. Many of you want the shortcut to anything. And let me remind you, there are no hard and fast rules in using phrasal verbs. But there's a key for you to understand. The key here is to memorize and read to know the context in which these phrases can be used. All right? So you have to memorize, you have to read, and you have to understand what those phrases are for. Hindi mo siya basta-basta pwedeng mahulaan na, oh, dahil meron kang get, ibig sabihin ng kumuha. Eh, get along with, ibig sabihin magkakasundo. So, there is no easy way here. There's no hard and fast. Now, if this is the verb, if this is the preposition, this is the meaning. Unlike the subject verb, transitive verb, uh, direct object, you have the subject in transitive verb, indirect object. We don't have such formula. Okay? So, the key here, is to read and know. Gamitin po ito sa pang-araw-araw. Okay? So, ask out. The meaning of ask out is ask someone to go on a date. What about catch up? The meaning of catch up is to reach the same position or level as someone. Clean up is to make clean and orderly. Come across, find by chance. Example, when I was uh, buying some groceries yesterday, I came across this snack that I used to eat when I was a child. Diba? 
habang ako ay naglalakad, binibili ng groceries, natagpuan ko. Yeah. So natagpuan, come across. Cross out. Guys, especially for pen and paper based IELTS, when you say cross out errors with one line, this is what we need. You do not cross out using this. You do not cross out using uh, so tooth like that. You do not do it like this. You do not put it like this. You do not do it like this. Only this. You are going to strike through using only a one line. All right? Using only a one line. Draw a line through. Cut out. Stop an annoying activity. The phrase cut out is a separable verb. Separable phrasal verb like this. Hey, cut it out, which means stop that. I'm getting annoyed. All right? Let's say your kid is playing with a very noisy toy. So you're, you cannot concentrate. So you say, hey, cut it out. Or they're talking, they're shouting at each other. So you say, cut it out. Okay. Do over, repeat, figure out, find the answer by logic, fill out. I've already mentioned what that is, complete a form. Find out, which means discover an information. Get in means you're going to enter a vehicle. Get into means to arrive. Okay? Uh, pwede rin yung ano sa get into. Uh, involve. Let's say, my cousin got into a fight yesterday. Na involve. So you can also use get into or involve or arrival. So they are different. Take a look at that. In, into. Those are different prepositions. Their meanings are different. Get off. You're going to leave. Get on, which you enter. Get over, recover from an illness. Get through to finish. Give back to return. Okay? Give up, which means to stop doing something. Go over, review or check. Hand in means submit. So you have to hand in your assignment by next week. It means you're going to submit. Hand out. What's the difference? Hand out is for your own. Hand in. Hand out is where the teacher gives the material to the students. I'm going to hand it out. Binibigay. Hand in, you're going to submit. Those are different things. Keep out, which means don't enter. Keep up. Same as with catch up. You have to reach the same level or position as with someone. Make up. Okay. Make up, this is actually going to confuse many people. But before we do so, I'm going to drink my water first. Okay, make up means distribute. Let's say text. All right, distribute and to do password. Do you guys remember your makeup duties? Sino mga nurses dito? Sino mga medical professionals? Uh, Jonalyn, are you a nurse or a medical professional by chance? No, sir. Okay. Jao, when you were still studying, medte ka Jao, di ba? Meron ba kayong makeup duty, Jao? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. sir. Every absence says there is a corresponding makeup duty. Oh, ilan, ilan? Depends, sir. Pag nag-absent ka ng one day, three days of makeup, oh, then diba? if so, absent... That is what we understand. Five, Sabi yes, natin dyan, one is to three. Yan ang yes, ratio. Sir. Like, if you're going to make a leave of absence um, unannounced or unexcused absence, you will be making up for it. Pag sinabing make up, bawi. Nagigets nyo? So make up is not just something that you put on your face. Okay? Make up means you're going to do past work. May gagawin ka because you're going to um, babawi ka. All right, for an activity that you weren't able to do. So instead of saying um, make up as for something that goes to your face, all right, um, my cousin brought flowers 
for his oh for uh, for his wife to make up for their fight last night. Are you guys seeing this? My cousin brought flowers for his wife to make up for his uh, for their fight last night. Like away sila kagabi. So make up means bumabawi. So remember, make up in Filipino translation it means bawe. All right, we're going to do something to compensate for the past action you either did or a past action that you weren't able to do and you're just making up for it. Okay? So that is what make up is. Now, let's continue. Name after ipapangalan. Okay? Like I'm going to name my son after my favorite Pokemon, Charizard. Yeah, that's weird. Okay? Like, come here, Charizard. Come here, Bulbasaur. It's weird. Okay. Pick out means to select. So pick out from the dresses I have for you. It means mamilika. Okay. Point out to call someone's attention. Attention, sorry. Put away means to remove to an appropriate place. Hey, put away your phones. I'm talking, example. Shut off means the machine is going to be stopped. Take after, resemble. You know what? You take after your father because your face is very remarkable from your father's expression. Parang nagkakamuka. Take over means take control. Take up, begin a new activity. Tear down is to demolish. Tear up is to tear into many little pieces. Ang pronunciation, tear. Okay, pronunciation is tear. Dahil yung pronunciation at tear, okay, is for luha. Tears, droplet of water. Tear means to destroy. So tear into many little pieces. Think over, consider. All right, like, sir, I have thought this over and I think that I'll be taking my examinations on the 30th of October. I've thought this over, consider ko, pinagisipan ko. All right, that's the end of our. Uh, phrasal verbs. Okay, before we proceed to idioms and idiomatic expressions, do you have any questions? Daniel, Joshua, Emil, Jeffrey, Jao, Jonalyn, do you have any questions? Wala po. Okay, that's nice to know. All right, now let us proceed to idioms and idiomatic expressions. Again, let us put this idea to rest, okay? Let me just continue. Let me just finish my water. Okay, so many people will say that you can use idiomatic expressions or idioms as what we'd like to call it to both the writing and even speaking subtests. Have you guys heard of anyone who told you that you can use idiomatic expressions for both your writing and speaking subtests? Because I always have students in a batch who ask me whether this claim is true or not. And again, I would like to put this idea to rest. I would like everyone to understand that for you to pass IELTS, idioms and idiomatic expressions, all right, these ones are not necessary to pass. Okay, if you want to pass IELTS, it doesn't mean that as a candidate, you have to have wide a range of idiomatic expressions that you can understand. Well, understanding them is one thing, but using them in both the writing and speaking subtests 
is another. And the idea is because idiomatic expressions, okay, they are informal. We categorize them as informal way of expressing ideas. And because there's an informal way of expressing ideas, do you think that we can get away with that in both the writing and the speaking subtests? The answer here is no. Okay? So, hear me out. If you know few idiomatic expressions and you can use them naturally for your speaking, you're not trying to force it. You're not trying to add it. You're not just using idioms or idiomatic expressions for the sake of para magamit lang. But you are trying to use idiomatic expressions because that is the natural way how you can communicate. Then go. But my students have passed the exam. I've literally had students who got a nine in their speaking tests without using any idiomatic expressions. That is a testament of your speaking subtest that your idiomatic expressions are not essential for you to pass the exam. But it is still okay to have an understanding of what idioms are and what they and and uh, and how they work in the English language because if you're going to work or study abroad with English as their major language, then understanding idioms would be essential because you will hear it on your everyday life, and it is also important for you to communicate the same way as they do. But again, hear me out. For both the writing and speaking subtests, idioms are not essential. If you will be using few idiomatic expressions in your speaking subtests, then that's fine. We can live with that. Make sure that your idioms in speaking would be formal. Later, we'll categorize what are the formal and informal idioms. What are the idioms that I suggest that you can use and what the idioms that I suggest that you avoid? Okay, but in writing, you totally avoid them. No idiomatic expressions in writing, please. Because again, that is an informal way of expressing ideas. But in writing, we always have to remember we are expressing ideas of formal interest. So avoid, avoid, avoid. Okay, so let us learn more about idioms, what idioms are and how can we understand them better. So idioms are, by definition, words, phrases, or expressions that are either grammatically unusual or their meaning cannot be taken literally. Because if you take the meaning literally, you're not going to get the logic out of it. So it's a bit illogical for the construction of these words to be put together, but since it has been in uh, the language used for many centuries now. It just got stuck, all right? So idioms, again, by definition, combination of different words that gives a different new meaning. So if you combine something, it creates a different meaning. Are you guys, uh, do you guys have something to compare this with? Yes, your phrasal verb follows the same principle. Take a look at that. Your phrasal verbs, where you combine a verb plus a preposition, they create different meaning. And your idiomatic expressions or idioms, when you combine words and other terminologies, other expressions, they create different meaning apart from the original idea of the word that you're using. So idioms and phrasal verbs follow the same principle, but phrasal verbs are much better to be used in speaking and writing because of their formal connotation. But idioms, those are the ones that I would like you to avoid as much as possible as you can because they are grammatically unusual. So it might result to um, not being able to deliver the message accurately or perhaps if you're not using the idiomatic expressions properly, it might lead to grammatical errors. So 
we don't want those things to happen during your test. So as much as possible, if you can, avoid using idioms, that will be appreciated. But if you can use idiom, uh, idiomatic expressions, use them appropriately. All right. So wow, it's raining cats and dogs. All right. And then your friend will, will be like, oh, anong breed? Diba? So you don't say it's literally raining cats and dogs because that's very unfortunate for those animals because they'll die. But when someone says it's raining cats and dogs, the answer here is it's raining really heavily. Okay, it's raining heavily. What about when I told my mom I'd be home around 2 a.m., she had a cow. Like, did your mom bought a baby cow? Not correct. Or is your mom really strange? No, the answer here is your mom was really upset because you're going to be home at 2 a.m. That's not the proper way of going home, especially now we have different um, curfew hours to follow. So your mom did not literally have a cow. Kasi kung nagkaroon talaga ng baka yung nanay mo, then congratulations, that's something that you can eat in the future. But she had a cow is something that you should not take literally. All right? So those are just some samples. So you already know the idea why I want idiomatic expressions to be avoided. They are very informal, part of the language use. Okay? So let us continue. Um, I never learned how to use a computer, so I lost my job. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world. So when you say dog-eat-dog -dog world, only the best uh, survive, okay? What about the cream of the crop means the best? You have a finger in the pie, you're involved. Use your noodle to think, okay? What about common useful idioms by category? So let's start with like water off a duck's back. You say that an insult or criticism is like water off a duck's back if it doesn't upset you. Sabi ng water off a duck's back walang talab, walang effect. Like you can bash me all you want. You can um, hate me all you want, but I will be unaffected by your hate. That is like water off a duck's back. All right? Night owl is a person who like to stay up and do things late at night. Queer fish, people who are a bit strange and can sometimes behave in an unusual way. A whale of a time, if you have a whale of a time, you have a great time and really enjoyed yourself. Like, thank you for yesterday's treat, Kevin. I really had a whale of a time. It means that you really had a wonderful time with the friends that you're referring to. A wolf in sheep's clothing, they are treacherous people. They are the ones who will stab you in the back. When you say wolf in sheep's clothing, they are pretending to be good. But deep inside, they are really a bad person. Can of worms. If you say a situation or an issue is a can of worms, you think that getting involved in that could lead to problems and you're trying to avoid that. Okay. Now, chickens come home through. So many of my students love this. Love this phrase because when you refer to as chickens come home to roost, people are suffering from the unpleasant consequences of their bad actions in the past. So in Tagalog, all right, chickens come home to roost can be translated as hinarma, all right? Nakarma ka din. For example, all right, um, a husband and wife uh, their marriage fell apart. So the husband cheated on the wife for another woman. Okay, so ito. So sila na magkasama. Then the woman whom the husband replaced his wife with cheated for another man. So sila na kasama, naiwan mag-isa si husband, happy na si girl, to the, um, her new husband. So nabalitaan yon. sabihin, ha, ha, ha. Chickens. Come home to roost. Na karma. All right? So nangyari sa kanya yung ginawa niya. All right. Drink like a fish. People drink a lot of alcohol when they drink like a fish. Eyes like a hawk. If someone has eyes like a hawk, they have very good eyesight and they notice everything. All right? 
What about killing two birds with one stone? If you kill two birds with one stone, you can achieve two things with just one action. So for example, you are showering. Okay, you're inside the shower. So because you don't just want to accomplish being clean yourself, you want to include the plates. So as you do your shower, as you're in the shower, you're also washing the dishes. Okay? That is killing two birds with one stone. Jonalyn, do you do that? While you shower, you wash the dishes together? No, sir. Okay. No. Let you save water. You know? You need to try that. You know, safeguard, that's the, the soap that you use. It makes the body clean. So it can also make the plates clean when you do shower together with washing the dishes. What about you, Daniel Joshua? Have you tried doing this? Okay. Daniel's not answering. Probably he's busy. So let's continue. Let the cat out of the bag. When you say... I let the cat out of the bag. You let someone know a secret. Like, hey, don't tell this to anyone, but I'm going to let the cat out of the bag. And you will be like, you will be like, huh, why? Pets are not allowed here. Right? So that's wrong. Because when you say you're going to let the cat out of the bag, it means that you're going to let someone know it's a secret. Like a fish out of water, they're surrounded by people who are different from, from them. And it's making them uncomfortable. So we say, like a fish out of water. Let's say, ano kaya, millennial, ang trip mo, mga TikTok videos, and then, biglang inaya ka ng lola mo, na magbingo, di ba? So, di mo trip yan eh. So, you felt like a fish out of water. That's what it means. Quiet as a mouse, they're very quiet. Sick as a dog, they're very sick. Take the bull by the horns, they're going to um, deal with the problem and challenge them in a direct and fearsome way. Talk turkey, it means you're going to discuss money or business to someone. The lion's share. Take a look at how IELTS existed. In the past, examiners favor the lion's share for pie chart. Let's say you have a pie chart here. Okay, wait, I'm going to draw. Let's say you have a pie chart. Okay. And in this pie chart, you have different parts, right? Okay. Now, this one receives uh, about 67%, and the green one only has 2%, uh, I mean 12%. Then you have um, the blue one, and then you still have the purple one. Okay. Now, because um, the red one contains most of the share. We refer to this as the lion's share in the past. And we got away with it fairly easily in the past. But examiners got fed up the same way as them not favoring nowadays anymore. So they said to us, tell your students not to use the lion's share anymore. Use a much more academic word for pie charts which is majority or um, a huge share, large portion, okay? So instead of using lion share, so they don't want to use the word lion share anymore. Rat race is a highly competitive and stressful world of work and business. So that's the rat race, okay? Now, let us continue. Uh, let's supply the most appropriate idiom. The priest at our church seemed to be a very warm and caring man, but later found out that he was a wolf in sheep's clothing. This political scandal is a real can of worms. Let us not consider it. So for buildings, you have an ivory tower. If a person separates them from everyday life, hit the roof when they become extremely angry, make yourself at home. You, it means that you need to feel relaxed and feel comfortable. Well, you make yourself at home is an expression that I could suggest that you can use in the speaking test. Okay, you can use it. This is a, a formal idiomatic expression. Nothing to write home about means it's not very important or it's not very good. Like your friend asked you, hey, how are you? Oh, you know, 
nothing to write home about means it's not very good. It's not very pleasant. Things are not happening so well for you. Run of the mill, it's ordinary and nothing special. The handwriting is on the wall. Uh, there are signs that a person or organization is in trouble and might soon fail. Waiting in the wings, mga abangers. Okay, when you say waiting in the wings, they are ready to take over a role or a position when you have the chance to do so. So let's apply the most appropriate idiom. The rumor is that Mr. Santos will be removed and Mrs. Sanchez is waiting in the wings to take over as manager. For him, bungee jumping is just run off the mill because he has been doing it for the past eight years. Imagine mo, walang taong ka nagbabungee jumping, di ba? Normal na lang sa iyo. Iba kasi, ah! So it's the first time, okay? But since this person is, has been doing this bungee jumping for the past eight years, it's run off the mill or normal na lang sa kanya yung feeling na yun. At the drop of a hat means you do it immediately without preparation or planning. Deep pockets, you can say a person, all right? Or an organization has deep pockets if they have lots of money. Earn your stripes means you have to prove that you have the skills or ability for a particular job or rank. Fill somebody's shoes. It means you can replace them and do what they do. Hot under the collar. You feel angry or annoyed. Keep it under your hat. It means you're not going to let someone know a secret. Knock your socks off. It amazes you. I saw the carnival yesterday and it knocked my socks off. Off the cuff. You say off the cuff. You speak without planning what you will say beforehand. So off the cuff. You can actually use this in your speaking test. I recommend this. Off the cuff is a, a formal expression. All right, so let's continue. Guys, don't worry if we're being fast in this part because we will be, uh, I'll be sharing to you this as a handout, a PDF file that you can download and print if you want. So you can do and review them. Okay, we're just rounding them up because there are more important things that we need to finish in the end. Talk through your hat. You're talking about something without knowing much about it. Tighten your belt. Same as with maghigpit ng sinturon in the Philippine expression, people need to spend less money to save for the future. Wear your heart on your sleeve. If you guys heard that expression, wear your heart on your sleeve mean. Um, People can really read your emotions because you're showing them freely, okay? So let's apply the most appropriate idiom when people doubt you. You just have to earn your strike so that they can see what you're capable of. Sometimes a speech off the cuff or yung hindi pinaghandaan or yung mabilisa can end up really hilarious. All right, colors, yellow straight. They can sometimes act in a cowardly way and not be very brave. Caught red-handed, huli. All right, na huli na. Caught red-handed. Give the green light, give it a go signal. Allow. In the dark, don't know much about it. Once in a blue moon, very rarely happening out of the blue, all of a sudden. Paint the town red is to drink and have good times in different um, bars. See red, don't talk to me. I, I, I see red, it means you become extremely angry. See through rose-colored glasses. All right, this is actually one of my favorite. When you say see through rose-colored glasses, parang masama na nangyayari, but, but you're still seeing the positive out of this. So you're, you have a very positive outlook in life. But uh, again, see through rose-colored glasses, hindi ko siya sinasuggest because it's still a very informal expression. Yellow journalism, in which sensational stories are used to boost sales or bias reporting, to change the reader's view on an issue. Both of these are unethical. So that's your yellow journalism. Now, blank, she came in, so I was startled. Hindi mo inaasahan. All of a sudden, out of the blue, she came in, and so I was startled. Finally, exams are done, so we can relax and paint the town red. You're going to have a good time. So food, have egg on your face, which means uh, you're embarrassed. Your bread and butter, that's your source of living. Couch potato, a person is very lazy. They spend a lot of time sitting around watching TV. Flash in the pan, that's a fad, mabilisan. Okay, nag-trend saglit, hindi na siya sikat afterwards. Piece of cake, it's easy. Recipe for disaster, which means it's not going to be um, turning out for the better. 
it's going to be for the worse in the future. To the fat or to the rag, people will have long friendly chat with someone. Easy as pie, easy as ABC, same goes with a piece of cake. Easy as pie, easy as ABC, easy as one, two, three. It means it's very easy. Eat your words. Kinain mong sinabi mo. Go down a treat. It's a great success. Grease someone's palm. Pampadulas ng kamay. That means you're going to pay people bribe. Half baked. It hasn't been properly thought out or planned. Hard to swallow. Mahirap paniwalaan. In a nutshell, in summary, not your cup of tea. Uh, it's not my interest. On the back burner, hindi pa siya nasa plan. All right? Hindi pa siya nasa priority on the back burner. Put all your eggs in the one basket. So hindi mo dapat ilagay lahat ng effort. You don't put all your money, your investments in just one thing. It's so much better if you're going to diversify. Because if that thing or plan fails, you lose everything. So don't put all your eggs in the one basket. Take with a grain of salt or take with a pinch of salt. So if something is difficult to believe, take it with a grain of salt. Huwag masyadong paniniwalaan lahat ng naririnig na sabi-sabi. Money, vested interest. You have a strong personal interest in it because you stand to gain from it. Easy money, which means you don't do much effort to get money. Feather your own nest, ginagamit yung mga position for illegal and personal gains. Feel the pinch like you're feeling the economical downpour. For my money, same goes with in my opinion. But hindi gagamitin si for my money sa speaking test. Go out of business. It stops trading and closes down. Made of money, they're very rich. Make a killing, made a deal. Make ends meet, di ba? Um, just to survive. Di ba? You're just uh, surviving on your salary. So you're just trying to make and sneak. Pay the price. Pagbabayaran mo rin ang ginawa mo. So pay the price. Pay through the nose. Again, informal. Hindi gagamit sa writing. Hindi gagamit sa speaking. You're going to pay more than the usual price. Pick up the tab or pick up the bill. You're going to pay for yourself and your friends in a restaurant. Under the table. That's bribe. Wheeling and dealing. Same. That's bribe. Worth its weight in gold. It's very valuable and extremely useful. So let's supply the most appropriate idiom. From now on, you have to make ends meet since he just got fired. His clearance was made under the table so he can, leave, uh, he can have it in one hour. Now, time, well of a time, like enjoy. Around the clock, all day and all night, behind the times, makaluma, day to day. It's uh, an everyday occurrence for the time being, temporarily. In the long run, permanently. It's high time. It has been long overdue. Kill time, pampalipas oras. Year in, year out, every year. So this will be their temporary shelter for the time being. She played solitaire to kill time since the plane will arrive for after two hours. Work, all in a day's work. If something is all in a day's work, it's nothing special. A baker's dozen is 13 rather than 12. Bean counter is an accountant. Beggars can be choosers or choosing beggars na tinatawag. Diba? Kasunugan kami. Baka pwede naman makahingi ng mga damit nyo dyan, mga guests. Pili pa, di ba? So, beggars can't be choosers. Game plan, strategy, glass ceiling. It's a discriminatory ceiling, boundary, that prevents women and minorities from getting promoted. Good offices. They are the ones that help and support, especially in mediating a dispute. Have your work cut out, which means you are very busy. Movers and shakers. They are the ones who can get things done quickly. Number cruncher, same meaning as accountant. On the line, they stand a very good chance of losing their jobs. Pointy heads, they're supposed intellectuals that actually don't know much about anything. Real trooper, someone who will fight for what they believe in and doesn't give up easily. Speak to the organ grinder, not the monkey. Normally, when you watch old Western films, uh, let's say a Texas-style Western film with cowboys in it, Nasabihin ng mga bida doon, hey, I want to speak to the organ grinder, not the monkey. When you say grinder, organ grinder, that's the boss. And then monkeys, those are the subordinates, okay? Now, swear like a sailor. Talamura. Teacher's pet, favorite of the teacher. The shoemaker's son always goes barefoot. Same as the saying sa atin mga Filipinos na kung sino pa ang panday, siya pang walang espada. So when you say the shoemaker's son always goes barefoot, your knowledge, your skill, hindi mo siya magamit sa mga kamag-anak mo or hindi mo siya magamit sa iyo or sa mga special sa iyo. Let's say you're far. 
Let's say you're a nurse and you're working in the U.S. and then your uh, son or daughter got sick in the Philippines. So, parang di mo ma-apply yung care na nirender mo sa mga patient mo to your son. Top brass, those are the people in the highest position. Try the boards, people who perform in the theater. Okay, trick of the trade. These, these are the something that used by people experience in an area that helps them. Work the system, they exploit the state or similar setup to their advantage. Again, I will be rounding all these up and I'm going to provide a PDF of this so that it can convert this into a handout. Don't worry, uh, after you read all through of them, you will be having a quiz, all right, on your own. And I'm also going to post the answer, uh, answer key later on. So supply the most appropriate idem. She is annoying as she always gets the attention of Mom Santo, such a teacher's pet. We have to win the proposal. And so you have to listen to this game plan that I have. So collocations. What are collocations? Literally collocations from the word co together. Combination of two or more words that are frequently used together. So why collocation is important to sound more natural, to be more precise. So if I am not um, suggesting to use many of the idiomatic expressions, I am suggesting to use phrasal verbs and collocations because collocations make you sound more natural. It is important for the pronunciation and delivery and to be more precise for your fluency and cohesion in the speaking subtest. So when it comes to colors, you can also use collocation for colors. So here are some of the collocations for blue, brown, green, okay, uh, gray. So when you say collocation, ang simple. Sila yung mga words na madalas magkakasama. So you put pale with blue, brown, green, gray, orange, pink, purple, red, and yellow. What about light? You use light for light blue, light brown, light green, light gray, pink, purple, red, and yellow. What about dark? Okay, you say dark blue, brown, green, gray, pink, purple, and red. What about deep? We use deep for purple, red, yellow, blue, brown, orange, and pink, and dull. Okay, for brown, green, and red. You don't say dull blue. You don't say dull yellow. You can't use the collocation for that. So here are just some examples. Here are some of the examples. She was wearing a dark green skirt. They chose deep purple for the curtains, light blue eyes, a pale yellow blouse, the bricks are dull red. Kevin, tell me about your house. So my house, it has a deep blue color. The posts are made from dull brown. And on the inside, it has light green interiors, right? So you can define, you can provide a much more specific and natural way in a precise manner how you can discuss your house. So we use pale, light, dark, deep, dull for colors. What about the other? Marami pa. So you have the bright, you have brilliant, rich, vivid, and warm for the words that are listed below them. Again, I will be converting this into a PDF so you can use this as your own handout, okay? So, just going to clear this so we can proceed. Okay, clothes, pull on. We use pull on for boots. We use uh, pull up for jeans, slip on, dressing gown, slip into something more comfortable. We say it something like this. Let uh, wait a minute. Let me slip into something more comfortable. Okay. Slip on. Hindi mo sasabing slip on a boots. Kasi ayun nga. Oh. Slip on. Para siya sa dressing gown. Jacket. Pair of something. Pag sabing pair of something. Pair of knickers. Pair of pants. Pair of glasses. Okay. Anything that goes with a pair. Shrug into. Shrug. Ganito kasi si shrug. So sabi siya, shrug, ganun. Okay, shrug into a coat, shrug into a jacket. So take a look at this. Throw on. Ibig sabihin, hindi ka magtatapon. You're not going to throw a coat or a jacket. You're going to put it on. I susuot mo. So let's say, uh, oh, we're going to the party. Is that what you're going to wear? I hope 
you throw on a coat or a jacket because it's very cold outside. So use the words, pull on, pull up, slip on, slip into, shrug into, throw on. So you can use the following for these specific set of words. Same goes as this and this, something more comfortable, a coat, a jacket for shrug into, even with throw on a coat or jacket, all right? So I'm going to convert this into a handout so you have your own copy and you know how can use them properly. Okay, so list of the most common mistakes with collocation. So I will be asking everyone, which one is right? It is impossible to make a research or it is impossible to do a research? Answer me, Jonalyn. Make research or do research? Jonalyn. Do, sir. Ooh. Actually, your answer is correct. The answer here is do research. So here are the list of the collocations that you can use for research. Again, I will be posting this on your handout. What about you, Daniel Joshua Cristobal? I know some people who have made the same experience or I know some people who have had the same experience, which is correct, make experience or have experience. Daniel Joshua Cristobal. New April. Okay, actually our answer here will be have experience. Have experience, has experience, had experience. So you don't say make experience, okay? You only say have, has, or had. So what are the collocations that you can use for experience? So you have gain, lack, experience, experience show suggests that no learn from experience, a bad, frightening, painful, traumatic experience, amazing, great, pleasant, and forgettable experience, good, useful, wide experience, experience in, experience on, in my experience, in your experience, by experience, from experience. Those are the words that we use together with experience, okay? So next time, Joshua, you do not use make, you use have, has, or had for experience. Okay, next will be work. Jao, Francesca does her work or Francesca makes her work? A or B, answer me. Sir, letter A. Okay. Francesca does her work. So do work, you have begin, finish, start work, look for, seek work, find, have work, get work done, excellent, good, shoddy work, paid, unpaid, and voluntary work. Those are the common words that we put together with work. Okay, next up for you, Emil Christian Flores. Mistakes, people often do the same mistakes or people often make the same mistakes. Answer me, A or B? B, sir. Okay, people often make mistakes, that is correct. So you have learned from a mistake, admit, realize, avoid, correct, repeat. Big, costly, fatal, terrible, genuine, honest, silly mistake. So those are the words that you put together with mistake. Now, I have here survey for Jeffrey Mendoza. All right, Jeffrey, answer me. I made a survey of the level of job satisfaction or I did a survey of the level of job satisfaction, A or B? B, sir. Okay, your answer is B. I did a survey. That is correct. Because when you made a survey, ginawa mo lang but you didn't uh, conduct it. You didn't carry it out. So do carry out and conduct for survey. Now effort, it's worth making an effort or it's worth doing an effort. So we, do we make effort or do we uh, do effort? answer. The answer here is make an effort. You don't say do effort, you say make an effort. So you have demand, require, take, considerable, great, tremendous, concerted, determined, valiant, Conscious, deliberate, joint, team, effort, and an effort to do with, without effort. So those are the collocations we do with the word effort. Children, my question is for you. Jonalyn, 
They married young, had two children, or they married young, got two children? Is it had or got para sa children? A or B? Come on, John, you can do it. Uh, got, sir. Got. Okay. So actually, when you say got, kinuha mo lang. Yung children, di ba? Nanguha ka ng bata. So no. It's actually had children, has, have a child, young, unborn child. So, my next question is for you. Uh, Daniel Joshua Cristobal, I spent two days in the office making business by phone or I spent two days in the office doing business by phone. Is it making business or doing business? Doing business, Bob. Okay, doing business. That is correct. You say run, set up, start, go out of business, in business, in conduct, do business with. So for business, you say do. All right, changes. My question is for you. Um, Jao, they suggested making some changes or they suggested doing some changes. Is it making change or doing change? Letter A, sir. Making. Letter A. The answer is making some changes. Fundamental, major, significant, dramatic, sweeping change, implement, undergo, bring about, cause a change. All right. Danger. Question. Jeffrey Mendoza. He drove so fast that I really felt my life was on danger or he drove so fast that I really felt my life was in danger. Is it on danger or in danger? Jeffrey? Letter B, sir. Okay, in your danger. answer is B. In danger, that is correct. Be in danger, put uh, in danger, pose a danger, great, grave, serious dream, danger, hidden, obvious danger, a danger from, in or up, out of danger. Friends, I found it difficult to make friends and felt very lonely. I found it very difficult to find friends and felt very lonely. The answer here, let me answer this for you. Um, both are actually correct. Okay. If you're going to use the making friends, it means that you don't have friends and you're having difficulty making one. Nahihirapan ka makipagkaibigan. But for this one, for uh, find friends, you already, okay, so find friends, you already have friends. You're only having difficulty. In finding your friends, because they owe you money. Is that correct, Jonalyn? Mahirap pa talagang hanapin mga kaibigan pag may hiram silang pera sa iyo? Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. All right. So thank you so much for that, Jonalyn. That's what I mean. So both finding friends and making friends are actually correct. But in this occasion, they have different situations to work on. So um, for now, that will be the end of our discussion. Okay. So before we end and we take our lunch now, meron po ba kayong tanong? Daniel Joshua, Jonalyn, Jao, Jeffrey, and Emil Christian Flores. Wala po. Answer. Sir, wala po. Sir, wala naman po. Actually, si ano lang pala ang walang J dito, ano? si Emil. Di ba? Kasi lahat kayo may J, Joshua, Jonalyn, Jao, Jeffrey. Emil, next uh, session natin dapat kapag ano, Jemil na ang pangalan mo, okay? <laughs> See you there. Joke lang. All right. So guys, that is the end of our lecture today. Take your lunch now. Bukas. Again, bukas. Maaga po tayo. 8.30 pa lang. Nakaredy na pong inyong mga equipment, Zoom, and everything because it's a major lecture. So eat, 
well. Get plenty of rest tomorrow. Have a nice day, everyone. Good luck and goodbye. Bye. Bye, sir. Thank you. Bye, sir. Thank you. Bye, sir. Thank you. Bye, sir. Thank you.